Hey there, welcome to another episode of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want to try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. And today, we're going to be talking about Batman Arkham Origins, the last game out of this collection of games that I've covered on this channel. So, it's taken a long time to cover Origins because I thought you guys wouldn't care to watch it. Probably going to see whether or not that's the truth in the next couple days, but I did manage to get a couple of really interesting things that I wanted to talk about with this one, and we can finally close this off and not have to talk about Batman ever again unless, you know, WB Games comes out with another amazing title, which might not be anytime soon. We'll see. <laughs> Why was that such a mean intro? All right. Well, anyways, let me show you what I got. The first thing I want to talk about is one of the most interesting dev cubes I've ever seen on this show. Well, outside of the boundaries of this place where you first meet Barbara Gordon and traveling such a distance that you finally get it to basically pop in shows you a cube that has a movie film clapboard texture on all sides. Obviously, this is a nod to the developers and how they go to set up a scene. Still, usually a dev cube is just a solid black or solid white. Having its own dedicated texture like this is something that I was not expecting to see. Next up, we got a special one for you. It's the penguin in candy. They're going to be the first example I'm going to show you today of the game's use of the A pose. A lot of people on the internet are becoming increasingly more aware of the T pose, which is the, often the default pose for any character model. But the A pose is a more subtle one. And you can see that in this scene where the penguin is smacking candy's bum and going back into his office, that the two characters get warped in the office in the same position, which causes the two models to clip into each other. Also funny enough, even though this isn't a boundary break, using the dev tools to kill all the enemies in this scene that is also within the penguin's lair has caused all these thugs to also go into an A pose, giving you a whole crowd that is asserting dominance. And now we're gonna be talking about models up close, and the first one we're gonna be talking about is the bats inside of the bat cave. Now, whenever you get a level up in Batman Arkham Origins, you do see that there are full 3D model bats just with no textures, they're just completely black. But they're full 3D models, like I said. But impressively, the bats are inside the bat cave are not 3D models, they are in fact 2D models that just happen to have a really high frame rate, so they can very deceptively look like they're 3D. But in truth, they're just flat textures, and they billboard around the camera at all times. And man, we are just going through all of the developer techniques one after another in this episode. We just went from A poses, to billboarding, to now low level of detail. Checking out these models that are way off in the distance in the field map, or the town of Arkham. And, and all these vehicles are basically boxes for the most part. It's really funny to see these low detail tires just slapped on these primitive models. It's amazing the things that we have to do to achieve a living, breathing world in video games. And again, speaking of things that are in plain sight that you can't see, there's all sorts of things that are scribbled along these walls when you first start the game. However, some of these things are obstructed by the inmates themselves. And so I just wanted to read out just this one here that you would never be able to see no matter which angle you looked at it. We suff penine our land. At least I think that's what it says here. It should say suffering, but I don't think it... Oh my god. You know what? I'm just gonna leave it because I was literally going to publish this episode passing off as that's what it actually says. But no, now I just realized it says we suffer in our land. It's just that the word in and suffering are really close together. Wow. Just as a little bonus here, I'm also gonna read off this one on this other side of the wall. It says never pick up a dead man gun, Gotham City Police Department. And then there's a little picture of a gun. Boom, boom. Now with this next one, I was so excited about it. Sadly, you can find these models in different machines, but this is a cigarette dispenser that surprisingly is different from other cigarette dispensers. One thing you wouldn't expect is that by taking the camera inside of these cigarette dispensers, you can see that they house real fully modeled packages of cigarettes. Something I was not expecting to see. Next up here, we have Bruce Wayne transforming into Batman from another angle. It's supposed to be all these close-up shots of Bruce putting on the suit, but one of the things you might be very surprised to see in this montage is that he has no bat cape the entire scene. Gotta admit, I was a little bit surprised by that one. And here's one of my personal favorites. Taking the camera inside of the penguin model will show you that he has a texture of teeth on the back of his neck. Obviously, mapping the texture causes the teeth to place itself over the back of his neck like that and they were able to cover up with his coat. I just... 
Wasn't expecting that one. That one is pretty good. I'm actually a little bit surprised by how the texture sheet works for the teeth. I, I now realize that this is just like a texture of either the top or the bottom teeth. And then the other set of teeth are kind of clipped out of the neck model. But still, I, I just, uh, this is really cool to see. And then next up, I want to show you the title screen zoomed out. I'm sure all of you can pretty much tell that the title screen is fully 3D modeled and not pre-rendered, yet the set pieces that are used to design it are very minimal. Obviously, this is to reduce load time when you go up to the title screen. You don't want to load up the entire city of Gotham just to get into the game. So the developers just did a quick mock-up that would only tag the different angles that the camera would circle around when you're selecting something from the menu. This scene, I don't know why I decided to show you guys this. I mean, I guess there is something boundary breaking about it. Batman finds an SD card and he looks at it from behind. Though interestingly, if you take the camera around, you could see that it plainly says memory card and also has the lock functionality over on the right. Before we even leave the scene though, I also paused this at the same moment that Black Mask is looking up at Killer Croc and it's just giving me vibes, I don't know. Black Mask is looking like a really, really small man and his eyes are all doe-eyed looking, it's kind of funny. But this is a good opportunity to also show you that Black Mask does not have a face underneath his mask. In fact, just for added good measure, I looked at two different instances that you're introduced to Black Mask. This is significant because any goons that wear the black mask do in fact have a face underneath the mask. So it's not that the developers couldn't do it. It seems that more often than not, the modelers for this team were more than happy to make a model underneath certain pieces of clothing. And we'll definitely get to that in a second, but just wanted to show you that, yeah, it seems that the black mask not having a face is a very intentional design. By contrast, we'll go over to Deathstroke here. And when he has his mask on, you could see that everything is modeled underneath, which is really surprising because it would be very easy for a model like this to sort of clip all the features underneath through the mask, but it never happens. It's just expert model quality. But yeah, Slade's hair, eye patch, nose, everything is there. Obviously at a certain time in this boss fight, the mask breaks off and then you're supposed to see his face. But again, it's just wild to see that the face is there at all times. One of the weirdest things though, is that inside of Slade's bodysuit, there seems to be a sort of concaveness to his torso. And, it, and unless there was some sort of intention to blow his body in half, I don't think that's supposed to be there. Also, really cool attention to detail here. If you take the camera inside of Slate's eye patch, you can see that he has a fully modeled eye socket without an eye. Something that not every video game that has an eye patch character tends to do. And if you think that's just how modelers work within the world of Batman Arkham Origins, I will give you one example where that's not the case. For example, when you go up to Mr. Freeze's face, you can see that the modelers did in fact model his eyes, including all the details around it, like his eyelid. And Mr. Freeze even has a unique eye color that the other characters don't typically have. Moving on from there, there's lots of scenes in Batman Arkham Origins where the player is just kind of bamboozled, surprised if you will, by characters that sort of come into the scene. This one here is supposed to be you opening the door and then a big thug kicks down the door while you're trying to open it. And I just wanted to show you what that looks like from the other side of the door. You can actually see the model shedding their culling and revealing themselves before the player gets to be introduced to these characters. And one of the more interesting things is that the big thug that kicks down the door is actually behind the other thugs and appears to have his right arm over his stomach for some reason. Here's another cool one for you. The player knows that when you're going through the vents that Batman turns invisible or goes into first person, if you will. You can even see his shadow over to the left or right, depending on how the lighting is set up. But did you know that what's actually happening here is that the Batman model is actually just being called out. Activating certain dev functions while inside the vent will show you that the model was there all along. And that's why the shadow is casted so accurately. And if you were to get a better idea of where the camera actually is in relation to where the Batman model is, you would be around the mid portion of his back. And then I want to show you some other weird things. For as hyper polished as all the Batman Arkham games are, Every once in a great while you can find something out of bounds that might be a little bit under polished and granted You're not supposed to see it anyway, so that's okay But at the top of the sky dome you can see that it wasn't modeled properly And so the top of it almost looks like an eyeball It'd be a very ominous thing to see hanging out in the sky I would not want to see that in the sky in real life trust me and I trust all of you and then underneath the ground is an entirely different spherical object It's an entire sphere that houses snow I don't believe that this is used in the game. I've tried to look for it, but in some rare instances you can find this hanging out underneath the ground, which in any case is clearly meant to make it look more snowy around the player. 
here's something that's interesting for you. Some of the boxes in Batman Arkham Origins has the logo for Cyanus Industries hidden on the bottom of the boxes. Cyanus, of course, being the last name of Black Mask. Now I'll show you what the ledge takedown looks like from another angle. There's a lot of weird camera trickery that goes into this when you're performing this action. However, if we were to look at it all in one shot, you can see at a certain point, the character models just sort of warped on top of the ledge instead of doing a seamless animation. And here I just want to show you something, obviously at a certain point in the Deathstroke fight, Deathstroke throws a flash bomb and then he kind of comes from somewhere and you have to react in time to not get hit by his attack. Well, I'll show you where he comes from for one of those times. There's actually multiple ways that he can come at you, but for this one where he jumps into the air, he actually starts off underground. And why it looks funky is because I'm actually showing this frame by frame so that it all doesn't happen so fast. And that's all I got for now. If you want to keep a show like Boundary Break running, memberships help out a ton. I'll even have exclusive content on the Patreon that is a little too saucy for YouTube. Keep in mind that these are all character models at the end of the day, and we can look at these models through the lens of art, whereas something like YouTube's algorithm will not do that. So I'll make that available to any tier patron and to members on YouTube. We will have an exclusive stream very, very soon. Very excited to catch up with you guys. But with that said, thank you so much for watching. And of course, other Batman Arkham videos are available here. Give it a click. I promise you, you'll have a great time. Okay, take care, everybody.